What's up YouTube? So today we're going to be starting the training on the apple fritter and the bubblegum sherb by Blimburn Genetics. Um, so the two apple fritters manage to top themselves naturally through a mutation. So the only topping we're going to be doing is on the bubblegum sherbs. We're also going to have to LST the apple fritters to try and get the top stems down to the same level as the two stems below them. Uh, we tried to top the bubblegum sherbs at an appropriate height so that they're going to stay about even with the apple fritters. So I based my topping location on the height of the apple fritters that top themselves. For the LST, what I like to do is use those fabric pins get some soft coated garden wire that I ordered on Amazon and what I'll do is I'll wrap one end of the wire around the top of the fabric pin and use the other end as a hook around the stem of the plant and then I'll bury the fabric pin into the soil as an anchor this way not only is the fabric pin exactly where I need it to be in order to get a good connection to the branch and the location on the branch where I want but it also doesn't pull the main stem of the plant either left or right like it would if we were to tie it onto the rim of the pot so it just keeps the main stem straight and allows us to anchor it down into the soil in a spot where it'll be most beneficial to us so the first plant we're going to be working on is one of the apple fritters. As you can see, it's already topped itself. So we're not going to be doing any topping on this one. But the two main stems have largely outgrown the stems below it. So our goal is to tie the two stems that are rising above the rest of the plant down to the same height as the growth below it. So we basically want a horizontal line of growth across the top of the plant to form an even canopy. So as soon as we find a spot where the anchor is going to be comfortable, where it's going to bend the plant down evenly, typically you want to hook that wire around one of the top nodes of the stem. That way it bends the whole branch down because once it gets adjusted to the LST, the top of that stem will start to raise up toward the light again. So you really want to get a solid connection as far toward the top of that stem as you possibly can. Now because I didn't get to top this plant and it topped itself, I didn't get to leave a little bit of growth above the topping and what that would normally do is it would prevent the main stem from splitting because of the pressure of bending the two stems in either direction so it could cause a pretty gnarly split right down the middle if you're too rough so I had to really take it slow not gonna lie I was a bit nervous about this but just took my time and tried not to rush things. So again, we find a spot where we want to bury the anchor, but before we push it into the soil, we wrap the hook around the stem. Once it's in a comfortable spot, you can then push the anchor down into the soil. And this is exactly what we're looking for. We just want a nice flat line across the top of the canopy. So here, we're going to be topping one of the bubblegum sherbs. First thing you want to do is disinfect your scissors. So I just took some alcohol, put it on a rag, and wiped down the blade really good. This is to prevent any infections from forming on the open wound of the plant. And while it's really rare for a plant to get an infection, it is possible. So we just want to minimize that chance as much as we can. So above every fan leaf is a node. So we're gonna cut right above the third node 
of the plant and that's going to turn those two growths that you see right where I cut those two are going to turn into main stems so instead of having one main stem we're going to have two and you can top it as many times as you'd like as long as it's a photo period and you're in veg now again the only reason we topped it in that specific location at that sp specific time is because the apple fritters had already topped themselves so we were kind of in a fight against time to keep the bubblegum sherbs growing very similar or at least as similar as we could help it to the apple fritters now because the apple fritter topped itself it's not stunted at all it doesn't have to recover one bit because there was no damage done to the plant in the process so I wanted to get this topping done as soon as I could so we left the third node on, we left the second node on, and we removed all growth from the first node. So here we've got the second apple fritter, and if you can see, the stem that's closest to us, where it topped itself, has started to grow just a little bit taller than the stem that's further away from us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna manipulate the growth of the plant by bending down the taller stem. We're going to allow the smaller stem to get the majority of the energy of the plant because it will be at the highest point. So the plant will always send the majority of energy and growth toward the tallest point of the plant. So if one stem is starting to outgrow another, you can tie down the taller stem for maybe two or three days, allow the smaller one to catch up, and then start to tie them down evenly. So I think that's a pretty cool example of how you can manipulate the plant's growth and make it grow exactly how you want it to. While we had it here, we're gonna remove a couple of leaves that are just wasting energy, in my opinion. Uh, anything below the second node is really never gonna end up producing much. So if we can remove that early, the energy that the plant would spend growing those, it will then spend growing toward the grow sites that you want to keep. So as soon as the plant's healthy and ready for a bit of stress, I think it's a good idea to remove any growth that's not going to stay on the plant. Next up, we've got another one of the bubblegum sherbs. Now, because this one did not top itself, we're going to have to top it. So, again, above every set of fan leaves should be a node. Each one of those nodes are what eventually turn into stems and flower sites. So we want to cut right above the node and leave a small stump above it, maybe about a quarter of an inch long. We topped right above the third node again. We're also going to keep the second node and remove the first node. So we're doing a bit of a rip the band-aid off technique where instead of spacing lots of stress out over a long period, we're just going to do it all at once and allow the plant a few days to recover. As you'll see later on in the video, uh, the plants really don't lose much growth from doing this. So if it's your first time topping, it might be scary, it might seem a little crazy, but you're really not setting the plant back very much. And if your goal is to train them out wide, then you will be doing yourself a favor. So here we've got all four plants in the tent. This is directly after topping them and training them. Uh, as you can see, they're not wilting too hard. They might be a little bit stressed, but they really look fine. They're taken to it just fine. Every plant will handle the stress differently. Some act as if nothing happened and some will stress out pretty hard from high stress training. But nonetheless, as long as it's a photo period, it will recover. So this is about two days after setting the initial LST wires down. We pulled them off after watering the plants and we're just gonna reapply them. So as you can see, how the end 
of those stems you can see them starting to curl up toward the light that was because they had already outgrown the previous positions that we had tied them down to so every few days we check on them and we keep bending them down to allow the node sites on those stems to grow up and turn into mains and what that'll do is over time as long as you keep it even keep a nice horizontal line across the top of your canopy what that'll do is give you a nice big row of top colas so rather than having one massive cola with a bunch of small ones coming off of it you'll have a pretty nice and even canopy of top colas so you're really just training and shaping the plant to grow how you want it to I'm currently debating on topping every one of these branches another time. Uh, I'm, I don't think it's really necessary, but I don't think it'll hurt either. So we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But for now, we're just going to be LSTing it down, making sure that one stem doesn't outgrow the others. If it does, we want to tie it down to the same height and make sure that the canopy stays as nice and even as we can possibly make it. Now I also may remove some growth. There's a lot we could do in terms of training. So I'm definitely going to keep you guys posted anytime I do any major changes to these plants. Uh, I'll make sure that I document it and post it on the channel. So if you're interested in this stuff, consider liking and subscribing. It would mean the world to me. So this is the results after a couple of days. This is the self-topped apple fritter. As you can see, she spread out really nicely. Uh, we've got a really nice cross between the third and the second nodes, and we're keeping them nice and even. So I'd say in a couple of weeks, that's gonna look really cool. Again, I'm not sure if I'm gonna top each of those stems again. Now in terms of what we've been feeding the plants, as soon as they entered veg, I gave them some recharge and fish shit. Uh, the last watering, I gave them Neptune's Harvest, fish and seaweed fertilizer and fish shit. And then the watering before that, I gave them some of the Supreme Growers Simply Silica. And I'm going to start incorporating silica into the waterings all throughout veg. But this right here is all I've added to the water. In terms of lighting, we're just under 50% on the FC8000, giving them about 600 ppft. Now if you've watched any of the previous videos from this grow, you'll remember we put one plant outside. Admittedly, I've been neglecting it. But that little mark right there I wanted to show you is a sign of a leaf miner. So a few of the leaves had that, I removed the lower ones that had it, sprayed it with some neem oil, and it should be just fine.